You are listening to the team of Victor, Vincent, Adam of Runner Runner Games. You can find them on the web at runnerrunnergames.com or facebook.com slash runnerrunnergames. Oh. All I hear are dogs and growling. Yeah, there's Lily growling. She's playing. She's got an angry bird in her mouth. <laughs> she want to play fetch with it soon? It's going to be much of a, more of a uh, candid and canon-filled episode. We have cannons now? Yes, we can afford cannons. Oh, I'm glad somebody can afford something. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that wasn't my department. <laughs> That's a great way to start the episode, so... Uh... Oh, well, it's it, we're back in the, the saddle to record a uh, <clears throat> a cannon-filled episode. And now there's horses. Horses and cannons. We just have money, don't we? <laughs> Saddles, horses, cannons. There's also uh, banners and ticker tape falling from the sky, so... A ticker okay. tape <laughs> I can only afford that, that crepe paper, the... the, the... Yes, Crinkly. the uh, well, I was going to say the uh, the ticker tape is made from Gaia's cradles. They're shredded Gaia's cradles. See, that just hurts my soul. <laughs> but elves aren't even good, so I don't see why. I don't see why people say that. It's one of the best decks in Legacy. Yeah, it has sure. a 97% win rate against uh, Miracles. Yeah, in what world? T- I was going <laughs> to say, how many times has he beaten you with the... Okay, so this is how we have a 97% win rate against Miracles. Um... We sit down. Wait, what, what do you mean by we? Because you don't have guys' cradles. I, I currently still own them. Okay. I haven't been sold yet. Um, but this is how we win. We sit down, say hello to our opponent, punch them in the face, and walk away. 97% it wins all the time. I don't think that's how uh, you play Magic. I think it's how you play uh, going to prison. Yeah. Well, same <laughs> game. We arrange the letters. <laughs> all right, that, P, well, that P is very useful. For those of you who uh, don't know what's going on, uh, we are recording a Run Runner Games uh, podcast. But, my, those people? <laughs> but the uh, the lack of my playing Magic has made it very tough for us to record anything, and these two guys can't do it on their own. So. Oh no, we're not very interesting. We tried. <laughs> oh, we desperately tried. We're terribly uninteresting. Uh, by uninteresting. I can't even do the word right because I'm sucking on my, my, my tooth. By uninteresting, do you mean inept? Because I'm pretty sure that's just what you mean. No, I mean we're uninteresting. I mean, I forget to talk and Adam talks about nonsense. So <laughs> the fact I'm that I don't, I don't think that we could actually get through an entire game commentating on what we were doing in our actual thoughts without it being a complete and utter disaster. I mean, I like disasters and people like disasters because they, they laugh at it. Well, yeah. But yes, when I eventually get free time again, I can't wait to build stupid decks on Moto, like the fairies that I haven't been able to play, and Red Green, which apparently became good by accident or something. There have I'm been not- a lot of decks in Moto that have been strange. Uh, there's that, um, the, the, the Ultimatum deck, the Grixis Ultimatum deck that's kind of sprung up. There was a green elf deck in Modern that sprung up for a little while. What? Uh, we play Collected Company, so we can do things at the end of your turn, put guys into play, and then attack for a bunch. I, I mean, mean, that's how that's how magic works, right? That's how green works. I prefer, I prefer to make my opponent pick up their cards and quit. I, you like to make people cry. I prefer to play Narset on turn one, and then, like, play Emrakul and after her, so... I like mm-hmm. to put Splinter Twin on things. And that, how'd that go for you? How'd what go for me? How did that go for you, ever? Putting Splinter Twin on things? Yes. Always amazing. Did, did, did anybody play Splinter Twin at, at an open or something? No, um... Why didn't you guys play the best deck that you could play at an open? We didn't, didn't have the deck. We didn't have it yet. <sighs> Just or no, Kenny, uh, one of our associates, I don't want to say a team member, but one of the people that we know played... Blue, red, white twin, which is completely just god Jess, awful. Jeskai twin. I don't want to call it the white, Jeskai. But you need the white. Oh, so for all Path of Omens and Path to Exile. Oh, boy. <laughs> Restoration Angel. Hello, Kiki Jiki Restoration Angel. Okay, but he didn't actually have Kiki Jiki Resto. Yes, he did. Well, then it's. Well, why did he lose? Why did he lose so terribly? Because the white's terrible in that deck. Blue, red, all the way. He doesn't know the modern format very well. I'm going to defend him on this. 
okay. don't know why, but I am. Well, okay, understanding. Okay, then why did you pick one of the more skill-intensive decks to play that's almost impossible to navigate if you don't know the battlefield? She thinks she's good at magic. Okay, see, this is where the defending him stops because that's <laughs> like that's that's moot point right there because you can't assume that you're gonna walk into a modern format, a large tournament, and just walk in and say I'm gonna win. Um. Uh, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I believe I won money at my first modern event ever. <laughs> So okay. I think your point is now moot, my friend. I'm just gonna say that you know more. You know a lot more about modern and the. the no, I didn't. But you know how your deck does and yeah. what it does to other decks. Uh, he no. didn't understand. No, from the I way didn't. Me- no, no, no. I didn't know a, a lick of anything about what other people's decks. I just knew what mine did because I played by myself. <laughs> I don't understand why this is even an argument. He didn't because know what he was doing. The white is terrible. Blue, red all the way. I win. The reason no why it's funny is because you're getting blown out by stupid you? arguments. I know, this is ridiculous. If, if blue, he, he wins. If he wins, why don't you 4 every daily you play in? Because I don't play in every daily. <laughs> no, no, I, every daily you play in. Every day that I play in? I haven't played in one in a while. It's been a Right, but you don't 4 all of them, so how do you win? I mean, that. I mean, I win most of the time. Like I won more than why, you. Why you lose is, is the thing. That, why I lose, I make poor decisions. That's more important than telling them why you win. No, I, I lose because I make greedy decisions. That's why I lost. That's why I uh, scrubbed out of states. Well, you know, sometimes you just lose, brother. But I didn't have I didn't have the worst record that day, though. I mean, you weren't me. You didn't go exactly. You did Adam. <gasps> Dum, dum, dum. You had to work. I mean, you know, well, we're adults with adult people jobs. Oh, what's that? I work at Subway. I get, like, overtime, and I got a raise and stuff. You got a raisin? Yeah, I got a raisin. Nice. Last year that I played in was Legacy. Well, yeah, th- didn't you go to, like, a Legacy event or something and then do bad there, too? I went 4-4 four, four for my first big Legacy event with the deck that I was playing. That's not super bad. No, it's better than I did in New Jersey. Well, I didn't, actually, I didn't have the board cards that I wanted because um, I left. Well, so I made the decision when we went up to Richmond to leave everything at home, so I couldn't make any laterals. Um, that was a bad decision because because then you know you couldn't do the uh, the stuff where you you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you live and you learn. Um, so now from now on, we take our entire collection with us everywhere we go. Every time. Everywhere. Oh, some... Sure. All right. So as long as you last know, words, uh, I, I haven't. I haven't attended uh, magic events whatsoever because I've done this thing where I started uh, training really hard, and I, I'll basically let you in on on something. You know what it feels like to to run two miles and not be winded? It feels great. You know what it feels like to run like six miles and be like, man. I actually did something today, and I just did cardio for an hour straight, and I'm not vomiting and in a hospital. <laughs> it feels pretty good. And, I know and how that feels. Do you, vomiting in the hospital? No, I mean the the running six miles don't feel like you're gonna die. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's awful, and that's why I, I, I'm not at that point in my life anymore. However, with that said, um, I am. <laughs> oh Jesus! Is that true? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm eating like an insane person now. I've been to like three buffets this week, and I'm just maintaining my weight because I eat so much. Because that's how much I train. It, it's it's such a good feeling between eating. Oh man, I'm gonna eat 1,600 calories today, as opposed to let's go eat 5,000 at CC's because I'm ready for this. And then you eat like 14 slices of pizza, and you and you can't regret it, even though you feel like a fat slob who's about to vomit. <laughs> But you know, but this this goes into into our other things. We we've been in, involved in things that are games that aren't magic, and that's the games part of Runner Runner games. Because I'm going to start pl- probably playing kickball in, in August. I'll let you guys know how that goes. I believe we have another person at, at Jersey's, like uh, what's his name, J Side, plays mm-hmm. kickball. But um. And I'm doing my run next week in the the race, the Rugged Maniac, 25 obstacles, 3.1 miles. And then a whole day of fun with mechanical bulls, bands, and beer. Oh. Yeah, I know. 
Sounds I, I don't drink, but I mean, I might for that day because you know it'll be cool and fun. And, there, and we got a we got a hotel. It's got a pool, an indoor Olympic pool, and then there's a a really nice Mexican restaurant next door. Are there actually Olympics held inside? Yes, they the Olympics are held inside. Oh, wonderful! They're very special. I feel like I'd be lied to if it was not on. I mean, that's that's how the world works. I was gonna say magic, but I mean, that's how everything works. You get lied to. A lot. Yeah. Which kind of? Especially control players who play miracles. I like playing miracles. Or death cloud. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we could talk about that on this episode too. But um, yes, I would like to get back to playing magic soon. But you know, the amount of food prep that I do every day, at work and for myself, eats up everything. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I got an hour before I go to bed. Better go was, run. Was that a pun? Like yes. The food prep you do eats up everything. Yes, okay. it is a pun. Okay. Yes. Good job. Uh, it is very punny. Remember that time we were saying, um, uh, oh God, what were the keywords from cards? Oh, oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it devours your day? Yes. Uh, we're just going to add a dash of fodder here. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. You're annihilating me. <laughs> and I know Adam's just sitting there with, like, the blankest look on his face. He's around the corner. I can't see him, so I actually don't know what he's doing right now. Oh. It makes me nervous. Well, when you've got prowess like us in the game of Magic, you can dig deep. <laughs> Just delve away your problems. Well, well, I mean, sometimes you have to, to come to terms because those problems can be unearthed at any time. But uh, Alright, mm. so... <clears throat> recently, at the Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir, uh, what is it? I guess event a amazing what, deck, what, an amazing what? deck. I can't hear you, Adam. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead. It's your turn. Oh, uh, that, that's just what the Pro Tour is called. It's just called the Pro Tour okay. Dragons of Tarkir. Okay. Well, I mean, but is it okay? That's sure. It. Okay. We'll enter there at Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir. <laughs> uh, a, an amazing deck. One, and it says red aggro, but I know it's red green. I know you're splashing for, you know, just five cards or so, which is which is odd because I haven't played Magic in forever, and I, I send Adam some text yesterday about, I want to play a mono red deck, but I want to splash for a, a Tarkus command. That's true. I mean, a Tarkus command's a pretty good card. Uh, define pretty good, or is it great? I mean, it's like, it's, isn't it a fancy gruel charm? No. No. It's, it's, it's a skull crack that a... also destroys enchantments. Yes. Oh yeah, uh, you that's can, what it was. It was a it was a skull tra- it was a skull crack that kills something else too. I like it because it's an instant speed. Put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. That's what it is, baby. Ramp. Mmm. Mmm. That gets me all wet. I like that because oh, no, the, the roof is leaking. He's actually wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, for the children at home that don't get that reference, ask your mommies and daddies. Don't, or don't, and don't sue us. I mean, that's fine, too. Don't ask your mommy and daddy about what, and not from the ceiling. That's, that's the lesson not to tell them to do that. Oh. Alright, so uh, Dragon Fodder came back, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, I need to go find my special ones from my favorite set. Gerbrins. Uh, what? Gerbrins. Well, Gerbrins aren't my favorite set, but you No, know. but, but they're, they mix goblins. It makes, no, it doesn't make goblins, it makes Gerbrins. Yeah. But yeah, you've got Dragon Fodder and Hordling Outburst in the same deck, which seems pretty good with a Goblin Rabble Master. So, so me and Adam were watching the uh, Open series last weekend, and we saw on camera probably one of the cooler styles of red deck that I've seen recently. Anyway, oh, is it the Dash deck he was? Yeah, about? it was the Dash deck. It was freaking sweet. It, there's a new two drop enchantment that um, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, one damage to each opponent. You pair that with Perforos, which whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, two damage each opponent. Um, Hordling Outburst, Dragon Fodder, Rabble Master, all your dash creatures. It's, it's a pretty quick way to whittle down their life total without actually even attacking. Oh, also, a Atarkis Tark- Command a Tarkus Command does absolutely nothing for enchantments. Uh, the fourth ability is creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain reach until the end of the turn. Yeah. I'm sure. I thought it was the enchantment thing. Uh, no, that's, you're, no, that's you're right. thinking right of here. um destructive revelry, I believe. No, 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 no. There was something else oh, that makes him sacrifice. It. Does damage and makes him sacrifice an enchantment. It's green and red. I don't know. Maybe it's not the command, but I, I don't know. 
I need to sell my Stoke the Flames. Or, you know, go to FNM eventually. Mm. So I can play them. I I'm not... I, I, FNM's fine. I just need to find one that's not standard. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I kind of hate standard. And that's, like, stepping back from Magic and not playing it has made me realize how big of a money pit Magic actually is. Yes. Um, standard is a very, very healthy format currently. It is fantastic right now. It is the healthiest it's been in years. Which kind of um, sucks, because we're not actively playing it. I'm not actually playing it, because I realize that playing standard costs me about two grand a year. Two grand a year? Think about that, people. Yep. Um, just throwing this out there, the command that you think about, Adam, is Dramokos. It's the green-white one. It's the one. There you go. Just, just saying that, you know, it's pretty cool. And there's, there was, a, there's a lot better things you can do with $2,000. Like, play Legacy. Um, or buy cannons. So, actually, <laughs> well, we, can, we can talk about the, um, the modern and Legacy investment, as opposed to playing Standard. Um, well, the, the recent revelation that we had? Right. You, you make a bigger initial investment to finish your modern and or Legacy deck. Um, do some research, find the one that you want to play. Don't putz around with a bunch of different ones. Um, hold on to it, find the one you love, build it, and your changes every year are going to run you between 20 and 50 bucks, maybe maximum, as opposed to standard, which is going to run you $200 every three months. At least. Yeah. And that's so. not for, that's for people who stick with the same basic standard deck, not the people like us who are like, well, I want to play this, better go to eBay, or I want to play this, let's go ahead and buy a bunch of cards off a TCG player. Yeah, it's, it's people, I mean, what was it, we had a, we have a mutual friend, Drew, that, you know, he's, he's done the investment in standard, and he's played pretty much the same standard deck since the rotation hit, and he says it's not, it's not expensive as long as you stay within the same deck archetype. But once you start venturing out and starting to support multiple people and multiple playstyles, it gets ridiculously expensive. Exactly. The only good thing about, and, and I think Wizards actually made a very good change of how they're approaching standard with, with the way they're they're handling the rotations and stuff. But they made a very good. I'm trying to think. I guess it's kind of like fan service the way they printed the fetch lands again, because now you have players who are going to get involved in the other formats as opposed to just standard. Speaking of fetch lands, in September we have Battle for Zendikar, so we're, there's speculation of the other five fetch lands being printed. I would it's like to, I would like to see like um, like filter lands, just to, uh, just so everyone will be upset and angry. <laughs> I mean, once they, if they reprint a Horizon Canopy, I'm just saying that wrecks a market right there. Those things are 30 bucks a pop. Um, the other thing that Wizards has done recently is they announced the Pro Tour next year. Every single event is either going to be a sealed event or a modern event. All the Pro Tours next year will be modern. I feel like they're trying to push modern on us more. They are, because it was a format that was kind of neglected. It's, it's a pretty diverse and healthy format. Everyone's going to say Splinter Twins the best deck, which... Which isn't Arguably true. it is. Which isn't Arguably true. it is. It's been the I mean, most major events in GPs, but it can be beaten. Um, there are ways to beat it. Boil. Plenty of them. Boil. Uh, mm, boil. pretty good. Abrupt Decay is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> we have um, some new cards out of Dragons that are pretty good against it, too. I don't, I don't know if you know this, but there's just one drop called Illness in the Ranks they have to deal with. That, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's also this card. You might have heard of it. Um... <clears throat> Vince, what, what's the card name? Which card? Uh, it, it, it's a charm. Oh, that one? That one that I leave <laughs> one blue mana up every time I play now? I leave one blue mana up just because of you and your sickness, you bastard. See, here's the thing, though. If we never had that moment happen, would you have been a better Magic player today? I am a better Magic player because I 4 0 a daily because of that. Exactly. I was playing against I was playing against a Jun player, and this is actually a story I don't think I've told. No, I was playing against a Jun player, and that he left a two mana up, made me go through the whole thing. I was like, okay, so he's got to have something. I had my one blue mana up because I had the dispel in my hand. I go make thirty copies of Deceiver Exarch. I go in for the swing. Oh, here comes the two mana. It's Rockdose Charm. Oh well, that's nice dispel. See, and now you you won that because of that day that where we were like, dude, just keep making them. It'll be all right. I got a nasty message. <laughs> 
must be nice to have it, huh? That's that's the nice way to say it. Sure. You know? Yeah, I mean, but nasty, no, then, nasty messages. It, nasty messages. People are salty online, especially when it's the you know the last round of a daily. And you, I mean, dude, that's them. that's his fault for thinking he had the game. Yeah. Like, boo hoo, cry me a river, get it's, a better it's deck. Just, it's just so funny. I mean, Jun's a pretty good deck, but it is. I mean, John's seem John's a fun deck in every format, but I mean, oh, it's, it wasn't fun a couple rotations ago for. Steam. Yeah, but that's different. It was a good deck then. Good decks aren't always fun. It wasn't a good deck. It was the only deck to play. Yeah. You <laughs> had to play Bonfire and Huntsmaster of the Fells and Olympia of Aldarin. Or you played Blue White. I mean, or you no, played that Blue- wasn't good then. It got better when Ravnica released. Yeah. Sphinx's well, Revelations did amazing things for that deck. Yeah. But yeah, uh, we're, we're we're at the we're at a a twenty minute mark here. I think oh. we're, we're actually we've actually covered a lot, and we're making good time for the first time back in, in a long time. Uh, I'm glad to be sitting here with a new headset. Uh, well, it's not really a new; it's someone else's, but I'm using it, which is I really like it because I can use it for all of these new games that I have for my PS4. <coughs> <clears throat> guys, <clears throat> we could talk about these other games that we've been playing. You mean like Final Fantasy? Yeah, go ahead and tell me about Final Fantasy, because I don't know anything about it. You know you can pick it up for the PS4. See, I, I've heard this because it's I, a cross-platform I, game. I, I tried to convince him. Oh, well, um, oh, well see, here's the thing. I, I have Gamefly, so I can always just have it like sent to me. Yeah. Um, it's, you it, have to pay monthly or whatever. But yeah, but I could just like pay for, like what, a month and then stop playing? Well, yeah. if you... I don't know if you can actually rent this one, because... When you purchase it and you get your subscription, you get your first 30 oh, you, days free or whatever. Oh. So, um, but if you've ever it. played an MMO, um, which most people have at this point in their life. I hate MMOs. I've never played them. Okay, well. That's contradictory. <laughs> that sound <laughs> nullifies your opinion. What is that? Uh, I think it's somebody, like, trying to... Weed eating? No, no, they're not weed eating. That's a motorcycle. Oh. It's a crotch rocket. That's the sound of their penis getting smaller. Yeah. Um, because they need to show off how big of a man they are. Oh, okay. Yes, it's weed eating. Oh, mm-hmm. good. <laughs> I was concerned for a second. I thought we were actually emasculating somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike traditional MMOs, this game, you, you pick your starting class or whatever, but any time in the game, you after you reach level 10 with your starting class, you can go one of the other classes. And you can cross your skills between classes, and then there's, like, prestige classes or jobs. Um, so you can actually learn how to do everything on the same character, so that's pretty cool. The other cool thing is it's a cross-platform game. You can play with people who play on the PS4 or PS3, as it's on both, even if you're a PC gamer. And the also really cool thing is, to avoid super powerful characters, each time you change your class, you actually reset your stats to align with that specific class. Oh. So, it's like, well, example being Adam's first character, he has, what, minimum level of 10 with almost every class? Yep. Yeah, so he's got 10 levels in each of the classes, which, you know, makes him well adept into getting into dungeons and um, things like that. But my character uh, has 42, 43 levels in Rogue and 10 levels in Lancer. So I've got a more specialized character. I can deal lots of damages, but he's got a more ranged character who can do a whole bunch of different things. So the, basically what you're saying is the game is... I'm trying to think of how to word this properly. It's a very adaptive game. It's yes. very it, it changes to each player style very well. It's fun for all. Fun for all, yeah. Well, I've been playing... Um, the last game I played was Grand Theft Auto V. I only got like 20 minutes into it, and I was like, man, this isn't Vice City, so I really don't want to play it, because Vice City was the best Grand Theft Auto. I don't get out of here saying as Dreads fans, it wasn't even that good. I mean, Vice City was the best. The name's Tommy Brissetti, don't forget it. I never Anyways, actually played the game, I just watched it. Well, I mean, you know. But uh, the game that actually I have the most playtime on, on my system is... Uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, I really like it. Um, <laughs> what? I don't play first-person shooters, because yeah, they suck. Because they suck, I know, they suck, but I'm good at them, so that's why I play them. <laughs> I'm terrible at them. It's hilarious to watch me play them. Uh, I was ranked in the top 2,000 players in the world of Modern Warfare 3, so I mean, 
you know. That's amazing. I know, and then I just stopped playing because I got bored with it. But anyways, uh, it's really good. It's fast-paced, and it actually keeps you focused. But the game that I love the most, the game that I bought the entire system so I could play it, Evolve. Evolve is awesome. I heard it is. Uh, you can either play as one of four specialized human characters, or you can play as the monster that they have to hunt down and kill. And I love playing as the monster because I almost always win because people never work together because they're playing online. <clears throat> There's no communication, and it's great. Uh, I've had them throw down... There's one of the characters, I think it's the Trapper, they'll throw down a dome and you can't escape the dome, but I've had them throw the dome down, and I escape the dome as it's coming down, and I'm just like, you guys are terrible at this game. <laughs> so they have to erase the dome, and they don't get it back for several minutes. And you just have to feed on wildlife, grow and evolve, and you get, you know, you can level up your, your powers. Um, I really enjoy playing as the, I believe it's the medic, when I have to play as a human, because the medic has a sniper rifle. That's Cause, odd. Because that makes any sense. Yeah. Not at all, but okay. I mean, I don't know. It doesn't even do damage. It just gives you a soft spot to shoot for the other people to, to shoot to do extra damages. I don't know. But it's a really fun game. I love it. But I'm probably just going to send it back soon to get a, another game. Oh, and I played Shadow of Mordor for like eight hours. I heard that game is pretty good, but it's really hard to play on the PC. Uh, it's, it's actually an amazing game, but I couldn't get really into it because I've never seen any of the Lord of the Rings or know anything about, like, Tolkien myth. So... Me either. No, yeah. no, Adam doesn't. We're trying to educate him, but I'm not going to get into that subject because that's at least a six-hour discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Minimum six hours. Uh, gotta, well, wa- gotta watch 12 hours of people walk and throw a ring in a volcano. <laughs> He's getting so, so mad, I know he is. I'm just, I'm a... Well, so what else are we talking about? So Final Fantasy, <laughs> that game. Um, I mean, from what I understand, mm-hmm. it's not even like a good book series or movie series, so what's the point? Yeah, yeah. I'm, about to, I'm about to drop the microphone and walk away. Uh, however, I did buy a Dungeons & Dragons starter kit thing the other day. I love D&D. Uh, I mean, we should all get together and play some. I'm, I'm doing that thing where I learn how to, to drive and stuff, so we can all get together and play D&D one day. I mean, I'm one of the best not dungeon masters. <laughs> uh, I, I always make the games interesting, especially for the DM. Well, there's a path. I want to go the other way. There's a I path mean, to the lake. No, nope, I don't want to go to the lake. You should really go check out the lake. Uh, what's in the town? <laughs> the lake. Uh, the lake's in the town. That's a moving lake. You need to attack the lake. <laughs> I've tried Bro, stabbing lakes. I mean, that's that's throw a stick at it. Yeah. I feel use like... magic missile. I feel like you uh, doing that and then me being the DM would be just completely nuts. It would be awesome. It would be awesome. But no, I bought... um. What, who, what edition? Uh, It's probably the latest one. Fifth? I guess. I mean, that's not terrible. Fifth edition is better than the disaster of fourth edition. Well, it was, it was $15, so that's why I got it. It was just a D&D starter kit for $15. I was like, okay, cool, whatever. It's actually... We'll talk later, but you can do most of that stuff online now, too. Yeah, obviously. I, I thought so, but it's it's cool to... It came with, like, character sheets and a long explanation guide and a book and stuff. Yeah. I so, mean, if you're, if you're serious about working on that, I can I can definitely give you some pointers and advice and tips and stuff. Cool, because, you know, I've never done it, and I, I find it somewhat interesting. But, it's super fun. You know. It's, it's, it's amazing. It just kind of sucks that I can't do any of these fun game stuff, because all my time is focused on becoming an amateur athlete. Basically, uh, I'm I'm looking into training into doing half marathons, which for those of you who don't know, it's like 13.1 or 13.2 miles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's really rough right now, but that's I mean that's a lot of miles. Uh, I I now weigh 185 pounds. That's a lot. That's that's not as much as you used to weigh. Yeah, no, I used to weigh 300 pounds when I was at my fattest. So I don't know how much I weigh. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. I gotta get my body fat down. Uh, right now, I'm going through a refeed period, um, so I can eat whatever I want for like the next week, and then Sounds I'm dangerous. Beef refeed. Uh, yes, yeah, it, it does sound dangerous because I lose all the progress I've made, and by all I mean like oh, only like five percent. But in my mind, I feel like a fat, bloated, fatty fat. But that's like the science behind it. You you re you refuel and give yourself something else to burn off and. 
Yeah, and, and it, it restores the glycogen in your muscles so you can actually train harder and longer. Blah, 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 blah. But it science. just sucks. Yay, sci- because This section brought to you by science. Because science. <laughs> but yeah. Nash, Nash wants back in. But yes, we're about to hit our 30 minute mark, and I think we've actually covered a fairly large amount of things that we don't normally. That we, we actually used to have really boring shows most of the time. But, you know, because we haven't done it in so long, it, it went fairly well. Um, I guess we should start doing this every couple of weeks again. Because every week was just... We had nothing to talk about. Exactly, because we were just talking about Standard, and then, you know, nothing ever changed in the other formats. But stuff's changing because they're releasing more powerful cards, etc., etc. And we had bannings and things like that. Oh! And before we go, there was a uh, a fake rules change. Oh, yeah. That I wanted to be real, because, you know, that's how magic should be. But it's Mana fine. not emptying that out of the pool and burn happening? Yeah. No. I love that. I'm, I missed that. I mean, everybody does in the in the little bit, but nobody does in the long run. Because it would be even more confusing than it is now. Pretty much. And with the string of cheating that we've had, just on the physical aspect of magic, ch- cheating on the mental level is another thing entirely. <laughs> oh. Don't cheat. Tip your waitress. Watch our streams. We're going to stream things that aren't magic. And we're going to stream things that are magic. Oh, I streamed that thing that, that one time I totally went ham banana on that one game of uh, Call of Duty. Ham banana. Yes. I can't say the first part of that because it's a, a, a swear. Mm. So, oh, okay. Even though, I would... even though someone said bastard earlier. I did not actually say that. I said the F word, too. Oh, well, then it's, it's ape shit ham banana is the, the, the same. <gasps> yep, that's a burp. That <laughs> so like a little kid burb. Uh, but yes, thank you for listening to another episode of the Run and Runner Games podcast. Uh, I think the Run and Runner Games website might still be up because the uh, no, I, I think we have to re up it in like July or something mm. or August. Uh, do we put shit on it? No. No. All right. <laughs> But yeah, oh, and then we started selling cards too. We started selling mm. cards so we can fund our our magic addiction on, online and our um, real life problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you can find our. We have an eBay account. Um, we put stuff on there every now and again. Um, if you're looking to offload a bunch of cards, there is a website I will direct you to now. It is called CoolStuffInc.com. Yeah, that's a really good um, website. It's, it's fantastic. Nice. They have a wonderful program. If you buy from them. You get a discount based on how much money you spend. Clearly, I spend enough money to where I get 12.5% off. So, I, I wish um, so I, when you visit the site, you'll understand how much money he spent. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one of my friends gets like 13% off because he used to That's play... That's the maximum. Yeah, he used to play um, Hero Clicks, so... Yeah, and it, and it does support more than just magic. It's got uh, the Hero Clicks, it's got the Yugi Mans, the Pokios, Pokeo. it's got the, the Warhammers Vin, and the Vern, D&Ds. It's, it's actually it's a, it's a legitimate site that plays. It's, it, it caters to all sorts of gamers. It caters to nerds, just say it. I prefer gamer. I prefer nerd. Hmm. Why does this deck have 20 lands in it? What is it? The the, the red, red deck. deck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know what he was looking at. Oh, I didn't, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm gonna look into building this on Moto because I want to play it, and then okay. I'll just sell all the cards, like always. Do you? Um, we have almost every fetch land on Moto now. Um, really? Do you know the Muffin Man? Yeah, really. Uh, I think we only we have four. For, my have only have one Marsh Flats, but Marsh Flats. Two but you cards. have all the standard ones, basically. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, no, we do. And we have the the all. No, we do have all of them, don't we? Because we have the Misties. We have the. Oh, we don't have Misties, do we? No. No, we have Verdant Catacombs and four Air Mesas for Verdant Catacombs. And One four uh, Tarns. Only have two Tarns. One Moto. Anyway. <laughs> you guys don't even know what you have. No. He doesn't. I don't. I d- I really don't. But yes, I'm making pepper steak tonight. That's why I had to go get the rice ready. And that's what was taking so long. Ah. Uh. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. But yeah, we'll go ahead and end this episode now, and I'll go to the store and go buy my steak so I can shred it up and have delicious food for dinner. Sounds amazing. So I can go run and vomit. Yeah. That's my favorite pastime now, running and vomiting. Hmm. I actually almost pooped myself. I'll tell you this story real quick before we end the episode. <laughs> Always a good poop story. <laughs> uh, yep, poop story. Can't, we, can't we, go with that one. We got 30 seconds, so I can, I'll can. i try and jam it in there. We'll try and blow That's it what out. She said. You're jamming the poop. <laughs> All right, so we went to Nolan Trail, and Nolan Trail is a five-mile trail. Uh, two and a half miles in, the farthest distance away from the starting point where the bathrooms are, I felt everything in my body shift into my lower abdomen, and I had to poop. So I had to run two and a half miles holding in poop, just prairie dogging it. It was great. <laughs> and there's there's a medical term for it. It's called runner's trots. Yes. Diarrhea in, induced from running is a medical uh, anomaly. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> don't, don't ask me. I... I and I'm one of the sufferers of this phenomena called runner's trots. <laughs> there are not words. <laughs> um, Running yeah, induced diarrhea. <laughs> so is there a support group that you go to? What? <laughs> is there a support group? <laughs> Trotters Anonymous, yes. Yeah, Trotters <laughs> Oh, I don't even know what Adam tried to say. All I heard was laughing and words. Something about runner runner games, and you're <laughs> you have this affliction. Oh yes, uh, yes, trotter trotter games. <laughs> uh, I like how it's fitting now, runner runner games with all the running and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's, that's funny, but yes, the actual you. physical running, not just the metaphor. yeah, and not just the I'm a luck sack McGee like our friend uh, Michael. Mikael. Um, Mikael. Thank you for listening to this episode of Runner Runner Games. We apologize for any uh, incontinence while listening to it. Uh, you can you can find us on the web at runnerrunnergames.com or facebook.com slash runnerrunnergames and... Twitch.tv slash runnerrunnergames. Oh yeah, we got that one too. And if you ever see any of us around town, don't hesitate to stop and say hi, because we won't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Way to make them feel small, buddy. I'm, it's just the truth. We actually don't see anybody while we do this. We see each other, and that's about it. I don't even see you guys. What are you talking Speaking about? Speaking of that, so... Oh, so uh, it, the episode's it, it, never going to end. No, it's not. I mean, it's fine. It's funny. In, in Richmond, I'm going up to get some prize support for the side event I played in. The guy looks at my hoodie and goes, Hey, you guys are from Hampton, right? I know Victor Johnson. Cool. And then I sit down to play Legacy, and, you know, my one of my opponents goes, Hey, didn't your guys play that Naros head deck in Modern last time we Star City was here? <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, you did. And so, basically, everyone remembers Victor. That's, that's the end of my story. Well, you know, I'm very charismatic, and, and you know, I was a very uh, humble and good player, and uh, I, I basically butted into everybody's conversation when they were talking about my deck, so... That's how they remember me. They were like, man, they go playing the glass cannon Norset deck. Yeah, that was me! Are you talking about me? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look at me here! Hey! Oh, oh, one more thing. Oh, one yeah. more thing. I hope this has actually made it almost, you know, at least around the local community. There is a video on Facebook of James Kerr, a local judge here in the Virginia oh, area. Yes. Brother uh, Jack. Yeah, doing the, um, doing uh, Hulk, Hulk Mania Hogan. impression. Yes, just say Hulk Hogan. Don't Hulk say Hogan. Hulkamania impress. They're, they're, Hulkamania is a movement. You can't, oh. you can't make... You can't, you can't impress a movement? Yeah, yeah you, well, I mean, you can impress a movement, I guess. It's called ISIS, but... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. On that note, you gotta go. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's, um, that's all the points we could possibly hit. We even went political with this one. I mean, you know... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's it. Did you, what did you just say? What? It's stuff I gotta go do. What? Okay. I gotta go buy steak. Goodbye. Uh, all right, so we're we're good then. Yes, we're good then. Okay. I gotta disconnect. So goodbye. Oh, okay. Bye bye.